Hello again, this is a chapter 7 video and we're going to be looking at test automation. So a few concepts we're going to be considering there. Um, an important one out of all of that is the re regression testing and uh, how we go about regression testing using JUnit test cases, test classes, assertions and fixtures. So when we are working with our objects and with our classes, we often need individual methods um, which which will be called on our classes and objects. We need to test those methods. Um, we can use something like an inspect to provide up to date view on an object state, and, <coughs> and hopefully you've done that on, on previous exercises where you've investigated the online shop project. Although this is useful, really we need to have some way of automating our tests. Um, some people and some software teams are just devoted entirely to testing and, and any software development project will have a large proportion of time devoted to testing. And in fact many projects, testing is actually the biggest part of the project itself. It's well and good developing a project and developing an application but then testing is often takes the longest bit or the longest time. So we need to have some kind of creative and uh, creative way of going about testing. Uh, one important concept is the idea of regression testing. So what you do is you create an application that works fine and then you uh, create some tests for it so that when you then change that application you regression test it to test that it still has the same functionality as before the changes so that it's still doing what you want it to do. So what we do is to alleviate the, the time involved in testing and creating of objects and testing methods and, um, and testing of objects and methods together, then we can rig up what's called a test rig or a test harness. So what we do is we write additional test classes to automate, automate the testing. Uh, what these test classes will do is they will effectively replace human interactivity of going into um, applications and creating these objects and running these methods. You do need to have some kind of imagination uh, when creating these test classes and good well written test classes should take a, a lot of donkey work out of the actual testing activities and it's important to keep those, uh, those test classes up to date. So in order to do this and to, to help us with um, these test harnesses, there's frameworks which have been developed. One framework which has been developed for this is JUnit. JUnit is extremely good at helping automate tests and on um, our regression testing as well. So let's have a look at JUnit. So JUnit is comprised of a number of different sort of ideas really. JUnit is the framework itself. Test cases are individual methods that contain certain tests, including assertions to uh, work out and to test certain functionality. Test classes are the, uh, are the classes which contain the methods, uh, and they are green in color on BlueJ, um, so you can, you can distinguish between the two. Assertions are used within methods to um, assert whether things are true or false, and we'll look at those in a second. And then fixtures are also a, a quick and easy way of creating a load of objects and saving all of those objects in memory so that it can be created and taken down as required. So first of all, let's have a look at JUnit. So JUnit is not a um, normal um, part of the API. You have to go to the API provider or the Java doc provided by JUnit themselves, so JUnit.sourceforward sourceforge.net forward slash java doc as seen on the screen there. That gives you all the packages um, and there's a, a number of packages which you can use and a number of classes which you can use. As you can see it's not as big as the API, the standard API. One of the main important ones is the assert class. I'm going to be looking at asserts later on in this video and later on. So let's have a look at our um, online chop J unit. So you can see here that we've got a, a test class which has been created. Now if we right click on this test class you can see that we've got three test cases which have been created. So what we can do is we can go through and run those individual test cases or we can test all cases. So let's just run the test all. So here we can see that all of those test cases have run and they've all passed their tests. So the other thing we can do um, is we can use this test fixture where we can move test fixture to the object bench which is then saved in the sales test. Now I'm going to show you that in a moment. Before we do that let's have an internal view at the sales item test or sales item test. So um, here we have a constructor. Now these two 
classes here, the uh, public void setup and public void teardown, we're going to look at when we look at our test fixtures. At this point here, I just want to look at the individual test cases which have been developed for this one. So we've got three test cases here, or um, test methods. So the first one, let's have a quick look at that. The first one is the test add comment. So the test add comment simply creates a sales item object and gives it its required parameters, which is its description and its price. Now, this is where the clever bit comes in. What we say here is assert equals. Now, if we have a look in the API for assert, so equals, let's have a look at assert equals. And then we've got a number of overridden methods. Now, remember, when we've done our constructors in the past, we've had overridden constructors. And if you remember the rule about overridden constructors, um, you can override the constructors as long as the parameter list is different. So there's lots and lots of overloaded assert equals, and it just gives a list. So we have double acted, double actual, double expected, double actual, double delta, boolean long, long actual. So there's all different parameter lists. So the one that we're looking for starts with a boolean value. So let's have a look at our boolean condition. There's one with the boolean condition, and it's actually a another one down here. So here's the uh, equals method which we're using and you can see that it takes two objects in so it has an expected object and an actual object. So let's have a look at our method that we're looking at. So assert equals true is what we're expecting and then we test out this method call. So we simply try and add a comment. We simply try and add a comment um, and the comment which we're adding is going to be um, take three parameters, if we can remember from looking in the method, the name of the person, the comment itself, and the rating itself. If you check that method, you'll see that it returns a Boolean value of true or false. So as long as it's true, we know that the method works. The following line then does another assert equals um, in the same sort of way. However, what we're doing now is we're testing a number. So the number we're testing is one and we're testing we're saying sales the item one dot get number of comments now we've only added one comment so we expect the answer to be one so that should return one and we're saying here there is the one there which it should match so that's the answer equals there and that gives a boolean um, example and it also gives an integer example there you can see the other assert equals methods or other sort of equals calls being used in those other methods within the application and it's exactly the same. Let's just have a look at the test in it uh, for a moment just so you can understand exactly what's going on. So this one tests the initialization of the particular object. We create a new object with those parameters so we want to test to make sure that it's initialized with those parameters. We're looking for the initial description so we're using a string there and we're testing that that method returns exactly the same string as that. Here we're testing a thousand and we're testing that the get price will return exactly that number there. So those are some of our test methods and our test cases which are using within our sales item test. The other thing I wanted to show you was the fixtures which are used to support multiple tests. So let's just have a look at this. So now just I'm going to, uh, by magic, create a load of objects here by the power of pausing and playing my video. So whilst I'm able to create objects by pausing and replaying the video, you obviously can't do this. So it's often a long time to create these objects. Here we can see what I've done here. I just want to show you my show info method. So what I've done is I've created a computer object um, called computer with a price of £3,000. I've got a rating from Jim with five stars saying this is a great computer and a rating by Mickey which is also five stars where he says it's an awful bit of kit. So that took me the best part of a couple of minutes to create those objects and run those methods because I needed to put in a node of parameters etc etc. And what we can do is we can because we've got this test case, we can actually save this test case to the uh, to the class. So let's have a uh, show of how to do that. What we do is we right click on the on the on the class itself, and then you call this method here, object bench to test fixture. Now you'll see that the object bench has now disappeared. But if we go in and have a look into the method, that in the setup, 
it does has done exactly what I did. So in that case there, sales item equal new sales item, that shows my parameters which I put in, shows in my two comments which I made with two separate authors. What we can do then is if we want to ever want to recreate those, we then simply right click and then we do a test fixture to object bench. That puts that there and then we're ready to go again. So that shows you a real nice shortcut of creating a load of objects and running a load of methods within your test. So that's pretty much it for JUnit. Um, again, made up of fixtures and assertions which are within our test cases and ultimately in our test classes provided by JUnit. Um, have fun experimenting with that and we'll uh, investigate doing some exercise that in the class. See you then.